It's a Minimalist Monday edition of Optimal Living Daily, episode 2061, How to Let Go of Possessions, and Stop Making It Complicated, both by Leo Babauta of mnmlist.com, and I'm Justin Mollick, your narrator. I read to you from some of the best blogs in the world every day covering personal development and growth, lifestyle, minimalism, and more. And I'm on the road today, actually in the air, I haven't traveled out of state in quite a long time, but headed to Nashville this week. So if you're in that area, get in touch. You can always get a hold of me through oldpodcast.com. And I have two posts today, both from Leo Babauta. So let's get right to them and continue optimizing your life. How to Let Go of Possessions by Leo Babauta of mnmlist.com. One of the hardest things about becoming minimalist for most people is letting go of possessions. It's tough, I won't lie. Letting go can be an amazing release, and when you do, you'll feel liberated and light. But allowing yourself to let go is an emotional thing, and as with anything emotional, it's not always simple. There are a few emotional reasons we have a tough time letting go of possessions. A little while ago, I read an excellent series on learning to let go of clothes from the very small closet and several reasons were given for this difficulty. We have memories and good emotions associated with the possessions. We spent money on the items, which meant we missed other opportunities to spend that money, and we hate thinking of the missed opportunities. We fear we might have an occasion to use the clothes in the future, or might lose 10 pounds and fit the clothes in the future. We fear an uncertain future when we might need the possessions because we don't have the money to buy more. And in the present, We enjoy having the feeling of plenty. As you can see, there's a lot that goes into this bond with our possessions. You might also notice that the first two are associated with the past, the second two are associated with the future, and only the last deals with the present. There are two ways we can beat those fears so that we are free to let go of possessions. Number one, focus on the present. Sure, we might have feelings about the past and worry about missed opportunities in the past, but those are gone. If we focus on the present, enjoying this time without the need for all these possessions, we can let go of the past. Be happy now, not tied to memories or missed opportunities of the past. If we get stuck in the past, we are missing the opportunities of the present. And fears of an uncertain future can also be banished if we focus on the present. The future hasn't arrived yet. The present has. We have no idea what the future will bring, so worrying about it is a waste of time. We'll cross that bridge when we get there. Instead, focus on living now in the present. And when you do that, you realize you don't need any of these possessions. All you need is to make the most of this moment right now. Number two, focus on quality over quantity. Sure, it might feel good to have a lot, to have that feeling of plenty. But if instead we focus on quality and not quantity, we can get an even better pleasure. Having a few good things is so much better than having a lot of things. Enjoying small pleasures now is better than the fleeting and unsatisfying feeling that possessions give us. So focus on the present and let the past and future fade away. Focus on quality over quantity. And in doing so, banish our emotional ties to possessions so that we can let them go. It's not as easy as it sounds, I know, but it can be done. And when you do it, you'll feel amazing. And I have another post coming up in just a sec, but first, according to a survey, over two-thirds of Americans are planning to travel this summer. And as I briefly mentioned at the top of the show, I'm heading out today, actually. Excited to be heading to Nashville, which is the first time I've left the state of California in a couple of years. And all of this summer travel means that airlines, hotels, restaurants, bars, retail stores, and more have been ramping up their hiring. So where do growing companies like these go to build their teams? ZipRecruiter. And right now my listeners can try it for free at ZipRecruiter.com slash old. When you post a job on ZipRecruiter, they send your job to over 100 top job sites, giving you access to their network of millions of job seekers. ZipRecruiter's matching technology scans resumes to find qualified candidates for your open roles and proactively presents them to you. You can easily review recommended candidates and invite your top choices to apply for your job, which encourages them to apply faster. And right now, you can try ZipRecruiter for free at this exclusive web address, 
ZipRecruiter.com slash old. That's ZipRecruiter.com slash O-L-D. Stop Making It Complicated by Leo Babauta of MNMList.com. Now that I've learned to look at things with the lens of simplicity, I can see others making mistakes I've made in the past. I wanna gently say to them and to my past self, stop making things so complicated. I'm not gonna criticize how other people do things in this post, but rather talk about things I did wrong in the past. The biggest problem came when starting a new endeavor, starting running, trying to get organized or productive, starting blogging, getting out of debt, even the act of simplifying. I'd always make things so complicated. Looking back on it, I either want to cringe or laugh. And yet, I know that life is a learning process and those early mistakes helped me to get to where I am. Even now, I make tons of mistakes, learning as I go. Example one, I wanted to be more productive, so I learned GTD, Getting Things Done, an excellent book by David Allen. I bought tools that other GTDers recommended, set up a series of lists, tried out a couple dozen different software and paper approaches to lists. Every GTDer knows this problem. GTD and many other productivity systems can end up being complicated. Today, my advice to my former self is stop making it complicated. Productivity, such as I care about it today, is simple. You pick the most important thing you want to do today, clear distractions, and start on it. You don't even need a list, though having a list for remembering what else needs to be done later is fine. Have one list, but don't fiddle with it. Just pick one thing and start working. Example two, When I wanted to get out of debt, I tried various financial software, I made spreadsheets, I made schedules for payments, I tracked everything and so on. It was complicated, believe me. Now I know it's simple. First, stop the unnecessary spending. I know easier said than done, but once you learn to recognize it and stop your impulse urges, it's not complicated. Second, put everything you can to one debt at a time, first creating an emergency fund of at least $500. Pay off that one debt, then pay off the next. And example three, when I started blogging in January 2007, I looked at dozens of different blogging platforms and software, themes, ad platforms, eBooks, articles on every possible blogging topic. This is natural as I was just learning the field. But today I know it's simple. You pick a topic and write, then hit publish. Share your stuff via Twitter or Facebook if you like, But don't worry so much about that, just write interesting and or useful stuff and people will find you eventually. Just write and publish. When you start something new, sure, there's a learning process, but also realize that while the learning is good, the doing doesn't have to be complicated at all. Find the simplest way to do things and just start doing it. You'll learn by doing. You just listened to the posts titled How to Let Go of Possessions and Stop Making It Complicated, both by Leo Babauta of mnmlist.com. That should do it for today. Have a great rest of your day and I'll see you tomorrow in the Tuesday show where optimal life awaits.